That's very interesting. And you just mentioned about be, you being a, uh, someone that defends women, that is interested in women issues. We've come across a very terrible thing, which is suicide bombers in Iraq being women. Mm -hmm. And we know that you've explored a little bit on this subject and mm -hmm. we'd, we'd like to know what is your take and what have you be learned about this kind of situation? Right. It, it's a subject that as a Muslim woman and as a feminist fascinates and disturbs me in equal measures because I, I, I'm against suicide bombings under any circumstances. I, I don't consider them legitimate in any context. And not just because they're wrong, because I believe, you know, particularly when they're targeted towards uh, against civilians, mm. but mostly because of what they do to the society of the person who took life while taking his or her own life. Because we, we first started to pay attention to the phenomenon of suicide bombings in the Arab-Israeli conflict. I mean, they predate that. We have, we've seen suicide bombings in many societies and many cultures. For example, the Tamil Tigers in Sri Lanka, the PKK, the Kurdish group, the PKK, and many others. And terrorism is not new and terrorism is not specific to the Muslim or the Arab context. But where I'm especially disturbed and where I especially feel a challenge for me personally, because of my own background, to intervene and speak out is when religion began to be used as mm -hmm. a, a way of motivating this. And this really did begin with the Arab-Israeli conflict, because unfortunately some Muslim clerics made... Now, I, I have to stress that in Islam, suicide is a grave sin. Well, as Muslims, we're taught that life was given by God and only God has the right to take that life. Mm -hmm. So suicide is a very grave sin. So, but for some reason, some Muslim clerics justified suicide bombings against Israelis. Now when you justify something like that, it's like opening up a Pandora's box that is almost impossible to close because obviously the next step then is if, they, if they're now legitimate against Israelis, then they, people make them legitimate against other targets that they consider equally uh, legitimate targets. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what we've seen happen and we're at a stage now where more Muslims are killed by suicide bombings than Israelis. Mm -hmm. And so it's com gone completely out of control. But what we're seeing most recently, especially in Iraq, now we saw some Palestinian women who began to blow themselves up. And there was a big struggle between the secular and religious groups because it was secular groups that did it first and then the religious groups accepted it. So they used religion and this political argument. Now in Iraq, what we're seeing is suicide, male suicide bombers became uh, quite popular, or the, the use of men in suicide bombings became quite popular until the United States and Iraqi forces began to take measures against them, for example, building big concrete walls, searching men more outside very sensitive areas. You obviously can't stop them under all circumstances, but they managed to control them somewhat. And so in reaction to that, we're now seeing Al-Qaeda in Iraq and its sympathizers sending women as suicide bombers. And the most simple explanation is that because in Iraqi culture, it's a taboo for a male security guard or a male officer to touch a woman to search her body. And so they will often just look at a woman and, and allow her to go through very sensitive checkpoints that a man would be kind of given a rigorous checking over of. So what we're, we're seeing is women who in, in Iraqi society wear a big black robe called mm -hmm. a habaya. Underneath this black robe wearing a, a suicide vest and then moving into very sensitive areas or government buildings and blowing themselves up because they have easy access to those areas. And, and so through my research and reading other people's research, I learned that in 2007 there were only eight attacks, eight suicide attacks carried out by women. In 2008 so far, up until September or the end of August of 2008, just in those eight months alone there have been 25 attacks by women suicide bombers. So we're seeing three times the number and as I said, the simple explanation is because women can go through. Mm -hmm. But there are many other sinister explanations which for me as a Muslim woman and a feminist are very disturbing. And that is the aspect of how some of those groups have been recruiting women because they're ver in very desperate economic situations. Mm -hmm. Because we're seeing a tremendous rise in the number of widows in Iraq now. Women who've lost the male breadwinner. And some of these groups now go to these women and in return for recruiting them as suicide bombers, they offer them a lot of money to help the surviving family members. In other cases, obviously the woman, I mean, I believe in agency and the free will, and women do choose to become suicide bombers. But ultimately my, my opposition to suicide bombers and, and the recruitment of women by these groups is that groups like Al-Qaeda do not believe in gender equality. They do not believe in equality between men and women. And so women who then want to join these groups have no way of going up the ranks of these organizations. They will never be the leader of Al-Qaeda. So I'm seeing that these groups are very cynically manipulating women 
who, are, who support them, but knowing that at the end of the day they will never accept them as equals in this group. So it's a very tragic, in my opinion, manipulation and cynical use of women. And so I speak out about it as much as I can, primarily as a Muslim and as a feminist, to say that this is wrong and we must condemn it under every circumstance. And meet the needs of Iraqi women so that they do not have to resort to these groups, for example, to have money to help their surviving family members. Okay, Mona, thank you so much for this interview. We will be happy to share with some of our students and some other public here. But it has been also a pleasure for us to have you in the university. And let's hope that it will be again repeated and to have you back here. Thank, Thank you. you.